World War II coming to an end in 1945, the Batman comics switched the tone completely. The crime-fighting adventures were no longer as popular as they used to be, and DC focused on creating fantasy and science fiction stories, as to appeal a post-war audience that was no longer interested in superheroes and traditional crime fighters. In order to revitalize some of the old enemies in 1946, DC gave Catwoman a new outfit in Detective Comics number 112 and Batman number 35. The latter also features the first appearance of the mechanical T-Rex that Batman keeps in the Batcave. <laughs> now this trend of playing and expanding with the classic enemies continued in Batman number 37 and Detective Comics 122. In 1946, DC was able to create solo Robin stories that were published in Star Strangled Comics, starting with issue number 67. These stories didn't present many developments, but they allowed Robin to have more Golden Age appearances than Batman himself. The giant penny that Batman keeps in the Batcave first appeared in World's Finest number 30 in 1947, and it joined the T-Rex and the giant Joker card, the latter which first appeared in Detective Comics number 114 in 1946, thus completing the three main Batman trophies that have become a symbol of the Batcave. Nine years after Batman was created, the Batman stories were completely different, and DC Comics started to recycle ideas. In 1948, they published the first retelling and expansion of the origin story in issue number 47 of Batman. Once again, Bob Kane and Bill Finger work together in this new version of the origin story that also reveals the names of Joe Chill and Martha Wayne for the first time. That same year, Bill Finger collaborated with Dick Sprank and created The Riddler in Detective Comics number 140. The Riddler was one of the last truly iconic Batman villains to be created during the Golden Age, but sadly he was also one of those villains who only appeared twice before vanishing completely. Another one of those characters is the Mad Hatter, who was created in Batman number 49 alongside Vicky Vale, the new romantic interest for Batman. So the Mad Hatter did vanish after his 1948 debut, Vicky Vale became part of the recurring cast of characters of the Batman mythos. The only other notable developments of 1949 were the change of Two-Face's real name from Harvey Kent into Harvey Dent in Batman number 50, and also the release of the second Batman serial called New Adventures of Batman and Robin, The Boy Wonder. The serial featured Robert Lowery as Batman, and it was also distributed by Columbia Pictures, but it was not as successful or influential as the first one, which was a strong evidence that Batman's popularity was fading away. I had no idea there were Batmans Batman's on TV. Appearance, the the landscape of comic Before books the color changed, and there was little room for crime fighters, vigilantes, or superheroes in general. In the early 1940s and due to the war, there was a genuine interest in heroic characters, but as the 1950s approached, the new generations wanted different stories, different characters, and new faces. The Batman comics had a real challenge, to adapt to the new reality, or to fade away completely. Oh, he adapted all. In order to appeal to modern audiences, DC Comics tried to revitalize the Batman comics by completely redesigning the Batmobile in Detective Comics number 156. Dick Sprang was in charge of the new design, which has become one of the most iconic Batmobiles in history, and the same formula was applied with the Batplane in Batman number 61 and the Bat Signal in Detective Comics 164. However, these minor aesthetical changes were hardly a solution for the real problem. The Batman stories had become stale, repetitive, monotonous, and uninteresting. DC couldn't find a solution, and instead they created novelty one-shot characters like Deadshot in Batman number 59, or they expanded the history of classic enemies like Catwoman in Batman number 62, introducing the name Selina Kyle and her origin story for the first time. A similar thing happened with the Joker in Detective Comics 168. This comic book is perhaps the most important Batman story of 1951, as it popularized the idea that Joker's previous identity was that of the criminal known as Red Hood, which is something that remains relevant even to this day. The early 1950s was filled with unremarkable Batman stories, and the only notable additions are the creations of characters like Killer Moth and Firefly, who are not exactly among the most iconic Batman enemies. The popularity of Batman was fading away to the point where the Robin stories in Star Spangled Comics were cancelled in 1952. This was a symptom of how bored audiences had become with superheroes, and DC Comics tried to get the attention of a very young fanbase with stories like The Jungle Batman, <coughs> Joker's Boner, and The Joker's Utility Belt, effectively alienating their teenage and more adult readers. 
literary. Kind of a very young fan base with the stories like the Jungle Batman, Joker's Boner, and the Joker's Utility Belt. Joker's Boner? <laughs> <laughs> in 1953, the golden age of comics was about to end, and the Silver Age was approaching fast. The stories like the Scottish Batman and the Mary no! Batman Mickey Vale was evidence that the absurdity of the Silver Age was already taking over. Still, there were only a few relevant issues here and there. Batman number 84, for instance, features what may be considered an early version of Arkham Asylum. This 1954 comic is also infamous for this panel, where Bruce and Dick are seen sharing the same bedroom, a controversial image Told that contributed to the creation of the book Seduction of the Innocent, which condemned comics yeah. for being a bad influence on American children. Yeah. The last important development of the Golden Age happened in 1954 in World's Finest number 71, the first World's Finest comic where Batman and Superman team up in the same story. Because of changes in the publication of comics, DC was forced to put both characters together, creating one of the most enduring comic book partnerships. Since then, World's Finest continued publishing Batman and Superman team-ups for the rest of the series until it was cancelled in 1986. In a way, the Superman and Batman stories in World's Finest mark the true end of the Golden Age, as both heroes develop a trusting friendship that was never explored in the early years, thus marking the end of an era. The Golden Age of Comics ended in 1955, when the Comics Code Authority was created and comic books became strictly regulated. Yeah. The wave of new, interesting ideas and concepts that began in the late 1930s had ended, and instead a new wave of outlandish, bizarre and weird stories became the focus of there the superhero genre. Sixteen years after his first appearance, Batman had changed. He went from being a violent vigilante into a police detective, then a father figure, and finally a bumbling buffoon. We like to romanticize the golden age of Batman because of the many great characters and concepts that were created back then. But a large part of the golden age of Batman is rather unremarkable. The time period between 1939 and 1945 is 